Hi YouTube, it's Phil Twenty again, and today I was uh, testing out the uh, 6000 watt inverter. I've got power on it. I'm just doing a few tests to make sure everything's working properly. Now I'm going to go ahead and get to showing you what I'm doing with it. And uh, once I get uh, you know going with this, uh, I'm getting really close to uh, setting up the uh, rest of the system. We're going to have some. Uh, solar panels shipped in and uh, charge controller disconnect boxes we're going to run conduit from downstairs uh, to on the roof I'll show you how we're going to do that and uh, basically we're getting all this done as quickly as we can but we also want to share everything with you because if we don't share with you how are you going to know that we've done it how you know how to do it for yourself so I just want you guys to take a look and enjoy this video. It's uh, real short and simple. I'm just going to show you what's going on with this inverter and the limitations of this type of inverter and the capabilities of this type of inver inverter. So let's get to it. So what we've got here is uh, the 6000 watt inverter. We've got 24 volts on it right now. Let's go ahead and check and make sure what we got. Uh, 25.10 is uh, on the circuit and uh, right now we're actually in smart mode to where it checks for power uh, you know power saving mode whatever you want to call it and uh, basically the fans don't run until the it's requiring for power this uh, connector right here I don't know the name of this connector it's got a positive and negative wire. It's what I used to charge with the photovoltaic in. So you can see PV in right here. Or you could go to DC out uh, if you wanted to uh, charge something like a different set of battery banks. But this is where the power gets drawn in from uh, the uh, battery bank whenever the inverter is actually running. So how you would wire this up is you've got a ground, a neutral leg, a hot two and a hot one. Um, the ground is ground to earth. You, you don't uh, see no reason to ground it together with a neutral leg. It's a bad idea. The neutral leg is right here. It's going to power through the neutral leg and the hot leg is right here. It's going to do 110 volts between this one and this one and then 240 volts between these two so this is a split phase inverter I can run a dryer or I can run standard household appliances that are 110 volts because that's what it is in America let's uh... you got several dip switches charge current and control that's uh... not really that important right now because we're not going to be using this to charge anything uh, we're just going to be using it as an inverter because it's so limited to uh, the capabilities that it has. It doesn't show you anything uh, practically. Let's go to the front and so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, sorry I'm not on my camera stand. This is what it says when the power is in auto save, uh, power saver. It says welcome to Ames Power, AC abnormal, load. And it just got it shows you the battery voltage, etc., etc. Uh, it's not really nothing special. It shows you what frequency it'd be running at. So let's uh, let's turn the inverter on, like it will be whenever I'm running it at my house. So I'm going to flip this switch here. Okay. So now we heard two fans kick in. Both fans are currently running. And that pulled our battery bank down to 24.6 volts from 25.1 volts. Not exactly sure the uh, continuous power of this, but we are going to do what we can with this. We're going to do a bunch of different experiments to try to figure out what is best for this application. It is probably best to run real high amp capacity things off of this type of inverter. It's not very efficient and it's uh, you know just simple power connection 
turns on uh, automatically when you got a large load. Uh, for instance, a dryer, a compressor for a refrigerator, stuff like that would be uh, ideal for this. And then the rest of the stuff on the house would probably be best to run a smaller type of inverter, like a you know 1,000 watt, 1,500 watt pure sine wave inverter for the other electronics. Now this is a low frequency pure sine wave inverter. Um, I'm sure there's other inverters that's really good, but this is uh, what I currently have, and. I wanted to see some of the components on the inside, so let's take a look at it. Okay, this is our power inverter here on the internal parts. It, you can see we've got two big transformers. Um, and that's going to provide us our uh, split phase power from our, tr you know, it'll be able to run quite a bit of electricity out of it. It is pretty, uh, pretty much designed to run large app large power applications and I'm hoping that it'll do exactly what I want but if it doesn't then we'll just have to proceed with the most effective way to use it here's the other side of it uh, you can see we got these uh, four large heat sinks two on this side two on the other side we got another transformer um, you got several capacitors. This is our uh, charge controller here. This is the uh, charge controller that provides charge for the batteries. I cannot tell you what it does or what, uh, you know, all I know is it does 60 amps. This here is your charge controller. Um, it's got two ports on it. You got two connector ports right here, and not sure what it does. I'm sure that uh, they've probably got a device to do tests with it and have uh, full detail of the charge controller. I'd like to like to know because um, I would probably uh, not buy a charge controller if this thing worked fairly well. I really think that. Uh, I'd like to get more out of it, but it just seems like a big problem right here. Let's take a look at uh, these components here. It's obvious if you look at the way this is wired, this is the photovoltaic input, and this is the uh, battery output. This is what charges your battery directly. If, if you don't plug this up, it's not going to charge the batteries ever. So that's uh, what's going to charge your batteries. And actually, there's also additional cable wires for uh, from here to charge the batteries. So it's apparent that we got two different charge controller uh, situations. Um, this charge control wires here, uh, they go out to this one. Uh, that's the output. And there's also an additional output from these wires here. They go out to the main terminals here. Uh, the charge controller is completely useless uh, besides that it charges batteries with photovoltaic. I'm going to connect. Uh, 200 watts of solar power to it, which isn't a whole lot. And there's there's not really no big reason for me to put any more on it because it's just you know kind of there. It's you know it just it's it's there. That's about it. It's not really an impressive charge controller. It'll do 60 amps, uh, but it won't go past 60 volts neither. So that, that's a problem, and it makes it really difficult. So uh, you can see the guts of this system. It seems to be uh, kind of heavy duty, but I noticed that these wires are kind of kind of thick for a charge controller. But it just don't it seem like uh, it would uh, do very much, if you ask me. I've had trouble with this uh, charge controller. 
with those other batteries I had, which probably it was 100% the batteries, I, I put everything that I own on it, but I just feel like these, this charge controller is no, not very good for nothing. I, mean, just, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it at all. Uh, you know, maybe in the future they'll come up with some kind of a device that I can connect to it and actually monitor it. If I could, you know, get some kind of a reading out of it, like the tracers at least. But see, when you're charging with this, it doesn't show you nothing. It doesn't even show that it's doing anything except uh, there's a flashing light or a green light when it's charging. It's the only thing it shows you when it's charging. It don't show you the voltage coming in. Don't show you. It only shows you the voltage that's on the batteries. So, uh, YouTube, this is the inverter that we got here. I hope it does a good job for running the whole house. And uh, you know, maybe, maybe I can get away with running the whole house with this thing. I mean, I hope I can. I really hope I can. But if I can't, it's it's going to be totally okay. So, this is Phil 20 with Guns, Games, and Rapeson, and I'll holler at y'all later.